All right, so we kind of built our first city and now we're gonna go to the square and sell some stuff, but there's gonna be a lot of people who try to talk to us, so we'll do that. We love interrupted conversations from NPCs, don't we? Don't we? Hello, my savior. Here she is. You asked if we'd meet again. And here I am. Here she is. I see your fate has changed since last we met. Now you are the ruler who will determine the destiny of these lands. I am their living heart, the whisper of the wind, the strength of rivers, the luxuriant growth of the meadows. Do you wish to touch this power? I will show you a place where we can finally meet in flesh, you and I. Deep in the woods, there is an old mossy ruins long abandoned, nearly swallowed by the thicket. There is an old tree growing among the stones in the yard, which I remember as a seed. A shadow under its green crown I call my verdant chambers. Visit me there, my lord. And come alone. A nymph's reward awaits you. That sounds iffy. Um, I don't need any reward. <laughs> Then come to my chamber and be my guest. We'll share stories and laughter. Imagine the future and dream. So long, I will await you there as the ground waits for spring under the heavy winter snow. Okay, thank you for that. But we're gonna sell things. Uh, uh, don't need that. Or that, or that, or that. Gonna keep some of this stuff. But we can sell a lot of it. Money. And we have to talk to find Casey, the tiefling girl. Is this it? It's this one. This house is the house. A tense silence hangs over the house. Kayesi, your tiefling friend, emerges from the shadows, but her eyes are star staring into the distance. She seems to look right past you. No, not now. The turmoil is suddenly over, but you see fear in Kayesi's eyes. Her blue eyes. It's you. I wanted to say, I... I think you owe me an explanation. I knew it couldn't last forever. Why did he why did he even make this rule if he knew it would be impossible to keep? She takes a deep breath, opens her eyes, and speaks with firm resolve. Come what may, you should know, Atlas, that the person you know by the name of Kaesi does not exist. My real name is Kaliki, and I we well, it's a long story, and such stories are better told beside a welcoming fire. Will you hear me out? Fine, let's go. Uh, stories by the fire in the desert where I was born, my fondest memory. When the day is done, hosts and guests, parents and children, friends and rivals all gather by the fire under the stars to tell their tales. All they did, all they witnessed, all they heard from other travelers, 
and the whispers carried by the desert wind. My sister and I often snuck in to hear these stories, hiding in the shadows just beyond the circle of light and warmth. We are hellspawn, you see. Tieflings are unwelcome guests in Kadira, unblessed by this light of merciful serenry. We grew up sleeping in a common tent, scavenging food here and there like orphans, all but outcasts and disowned. We were 13 when we left and set off to find happiness in the cities, and everyone we left behind sighed with relief. <clears throat> My sister and I, we are twins, but as different as the sun and moon. Her name is Kenora, which means silent flame. She is fire, a cold fire, but one that turns everything to ash. I am a river. It brings me joy to give water to tired travelers and nurture green shoots, but when I flood, I am bound to bring death. Despite our differences, we are one. Our li lives belong to divine Nethys, and by his mercy, we now live in turns. While one of us is here and the other sleeps in another plane, and when she wakes up, we switch places, just as you wit just witnessed. Okay, so it's two of them. They can switch back and forth, uh, but when one of them's asleep, they're in the other plane, and when they wake up, they'll come back. So she's just kind of like, one of them is awake at all times. So this is why you didn't remember me when we were talking to Jamandi Eldori. How could I remember you? I never met you at the time. That was Kenora. She was the one who talked to you at the reception and helped you fight off the assassins. We usually write each other notes recounting in detail all that happened and describing any friends that KAC had made. But that time we switched right in the middle of a mansion engulfed in fire and filled with assassins. Kenora didn't have time to write any notes. And how is it you began to live in turns? The story, it's one I've never told to anyone before. No one in the whole world, and it's not easy to confide in a stranger. There's too much grief and guilt in it. If you don't mind, I'd rather not go into all the details. You see, my sister died and I couldn't get over it. Kenora was killed by a soul leader, a monster summoned by secret followers of Abaddon's ar archdaemons. Those who summoned him died in the fight, but the beast was too strong for my sister, and I wasn't even there to protect her. I, we had just had a fight, and we both did some stupid things just before, but I don't want to talk about that now. When I found out what happened to my sister, I was ready to make a deal with any power, if only I could just get her back, and I found such a power. I was contacted by Arcanothane, Arcanothane as a woman-shaped cloud of swirling energy. It's a herald of Nethys. Okay, the herald of the net god Nethys himself. She promised she would return Kenra to life, but on two conditions. First, we must both keep the arrangement a secret. Second, we would never be able to meet again, and so our new life began. Now we flee through the world, guarding our secret, always introducing ourselves as Kaesi to hide that there are two of us and we switch places with each other at random. While one lives, the other sleeps in a demi-plane created especially for us. You revealed your secret to me. It means you broke one of the rules set by the deity's herald. Yes, will you make me regret this, Atlas? I just thought, I thought you might be someone who could help my sister and me change our fates. What do you want from me? You must have come to me for a reason. That's actually what I wanted to talk to you about. Kenora was supposed to tell you of an ancient treasury that we've both been looking for. Gold isn't the only thing of value in that place. It may contain an ancient relic, taken by the Taladin raiders from a respected Kadiran temple of Nethys. It's an unusual relic, called the Disk of the Eclipse. I once heard a beautiful story that it was created from the shadow that hides the sun and the moon, but I don't think that could be the truth. Nethys is the god of magic who was once a mortal wizard, and relics from his temples are usually very powerful. There are many among his followers who think that solving the mysteries of magic, even rivaling their deity, is the best way to serve him. One such fo follower created the disc long ago in the distant past. According to legend, it gave its owners control over planar travel, but only pairs of wizards bound by unbreakable ties could use it. While one of them traveled the plains, the other was his anchor in our world, and they could switch between. Do you see now why we so desperately wish to find this disc? 
it might help us understand how the switch between me and Kenero works, and it should make our divine patron happy. Nethus and his assassins value the desire to understand the mysteries and magic above all else. Tell me the location of this treasury. It was called Sorrowflow in the chronicle we read. It was once a Talden town, founded by the veterans of the Fifth Army of Exploration. It stood on the shores of a turbulent river, and that was what destroyed it. One night, a terrible flood devastated the settlement, killing many and driving the rest to flee. Only the tower on the cliff remained which was too high for the flood to reach. Water covered their ruins for a long time, but last year it receded. My friends found a chronicle which recounted destruction of the city and spoke of the disk of the eclipse, which was kept there. They managed to track down the ruins, but were frightened away by the monsters and beasts that roamed the area. If this can help, then I agree. Thank you. I will not wait for you there at Sorrowflow. Oh, I will wait for you there at Sorrowflow. And please, let's explore the ruins together, just the two of us. I don't want to give away myself again in front of your companions. Breaking the Arkana Thane's conditions once was enough. I have no wish to anchor our god. So long. Wow. That's a lot to take in. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. See, we're lawful, so we have these, like... This will stand here. Some cool towers. Very cool, lawful design. Lots of guards up front. We're gonna go ahead and rest. Which you can do any point in the city, you can click, in any of your cities, you can click the rest button and it will just rest for you and your party. Uh, which is really cool. And then it takes you here. And there's like, your stuff you have access to here, which is cool. And then it's like a mace or a flail. You might as well just ahead. take it, right? Okay. We're gonna save before we do anything. Um, we're gonna claim the outskirts after we buy BP. Boom. And then whenever you claim something or um, do a rank up for one of your advisors ranks or one of your stat ranks it will go through 14 days and some of your quests are on a time limit which means you need to be careful about when you do this so i always save before i do them because if i accidentally go over the time limit i'll just revert back um that's the only saves coming i'll do in this game this playthrough unless i die um but eventually you can get perks that make rank ups and claims go for seven days instead of 14 which is really nice but until you get that you're stuck with doing it like two weeks which is a long time but you gotta claim it so, so we got that we got our free shrine so we're gonna go put our shrine in here which is nice. And all of this stuff should be built now, which is cool. So you can see what stats we're getting. We're getting some espionage, culture, stability, divine relations, a lot of econ and military, and then loyalty and community. I have found that the economy is like the easiest stat to gain, uh, but that's just me. Econ and military, pretty easy. And now we have events. Now, events can either be problems or opportunities, okay? Um, you also get these crisis points, which add to your uh, role um, for your advisor. I only use them for problems because if you fail an opportunity, it's not a big deal. But if you fail a problem, there's usually a penalty. 
So for this one, several bandit encampments have emerged in the Gnarl Marches. They plunder the peasants, rob travelers and merchants, and even ta attack tax gatherers. So you can send the treasurer or Amiri to do it. We're going to send Amiri to do it, and she has a 75% chance. So I'm not going to use a crisis point. We also have event of the month. Hold a celebratory victory. Both of our possible people are out. This has a will expire on the 1st of Erastus, which is the next month. So I still have a couple weeks to do it. And then it'll also alert you when people want to talk to you. So Harem wants to talk to me. And then an advisor wants to talk to me. Our counselor. Probably because we got to 21. So the counselor is going to be able to rank up. I don't want to pillage what to rebuild. This will get us the 500 BP. Um, I tend to wait for this until I need it, but it's good that it's there. So let's go see what people want to say to us. This is one of my favorite parts, just listening to the counselors, the advisors. So here's how this is gonna work. Whenever you rank up an advisor, or whenever they get to where they can rank up, I mean, they'll come to you with a problem and you get to make decisions which affects your kingdom stats, potentially your alignment, and other things. So they're really, really fun, and each advisor um, has different things to offer you. So like, Chandra as counselor is gonna have different opinions and different opportunities than if Tristian were my counselor, if that makes sense. Ugh. Your Grace, please spare me a moment of your time. As you know, it is my responsibility to hear what words are spoken when you are absent. And I must say, what I have heard lately does not bring me peace. These people are suspicious of their new baron, but I know how to solve this problem. I took the liberty of composing a list of the wealthiest and most influential merchants in the region. All that is required of you is to hold a lavish dinner, to show them how generously their support is rewarded. This would draw heavily from the treasury but I'm sure they will appreciate the gesture and your noble attention. Of course, you could use the dinner money instead to entertain your peasants, but I wouldn't recommend it. The whims of the crowd change with the wind. They will forget your generosity after the first bad harvest. So we will hold a luxurious dinner party and we'll get plus two economy and plus two relations. An impeccable choice, Your Grace. I shall make the necessary arrangements. Yeah. If you go against what your advisor wants too many times, they will quit being in your advisor and you will have to hire someone else who you agree with. So I would just try to hire people you agree with from the start. Uh, I heard, not that it's important, but well, <clears throat> I heard that an ancient trade road built by the dwarves of the Five King Mountain runs through these lands. And I don't know what happened to them or where they went. Unforgiving time spares no one, but the road itself is still here, and possibly not only the road. Well, Atlas, I have a request. If you find any dwarven ruins in the area, I'd like to see them with my own eyes. Of course, Harem. Thank you, Atlas. I, well, <clears throat> thank you. Oh, Harem. So now you have a companion quest. Oh. Your Grace, I was at Oleg's trading post recently, and I noticed old Boken just standing there, bored to death with nothing to do. This is most unfortunate. After all, the old grumbler is a very knowledgeable alchemist. However, he has no use for his skills, since the locals need nothing more than the simplest of healing potions. And then it struck me. Why didn't you hire him as your core alchemist? His decoctions and tinctures would certainly prove most useful to you. Also, it might be cheaper than simply buying from him or some other merchant. So now we can go to Boken and hire him as our alchemist. And what happens is there are different artisans that you can get as you claim other regions. And 
you have to do a quest for those artisans and then get them to join you and then those artisans will bring you goods that are kind of like a category like there's an armor one a weapons one a robe one a magic items one all kinds um so we'll be on the lookout for those <laughs> 